Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello there. Hello there. It's like 40 degrees out today, so it's pretty nice and warm. I went for a walk earlier. I need to go for another one because I hate getting stuck in the house. And I have a job interview on Tuesday. Please say your prayers for me. Excuse me for blowing my nose, sorry. I have the worst, driest nose, especially at nighttime, living here in Pennsylvania. Because it's like winter and the furnace runs and then you get dry it out. And when I blow my nose at night, a lot of times I get nosebleeds. It's got awful, but I can't breathe. I'm all plugged up and stuffed. I have Mountain Dew in here. And I was watching a little shop of horrors. I must have seen this as a little kid and I don't remember it at all. But I, I know the music. Like I used to sing all the freaking time. Okay, hang on a second. Okay. So I always used to sing as a little kid. I'd go little shop, little shop of horrors, bop do bop, little shop of horrors, bop shoo bop. Little hop ashore and no, 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 no. And I don't even know, like, where did that come from? I used to just sing it on repeat over and over and over. And it's off of this freaking movie. So there you have Rick Moranis. When I was just working at the Rite Aid Pharmacy, there was a customer guy who looks just like him. Rick Moranis is most well known for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves. And Honey, I Shrunk Whatever. Disney World used to have a ride, like when I was a young child. Honey, I shrunk the audience. You went into the theater, you wore 3D glasses. It was really cool. Um, you guys seen like my wigs before, and I have a lot of those foam heads that are the small women head. This is the only man head that I have that's like a great big guy head. My head might still be bigger than his. I don't know. His is a little bit different shape. And so here I have a Riddler bowl hat. Uh, I like, when I watched Hexton and he was with James Mansfield and they were talking about hair and he talked about the Justice League, all the women had like page boy hairstyles because it was like retro vintage pinup. Bruce Tim that used to draw the Batman cartoons and his team of artists because Batman was so popular like in the 90s when I grow, grew up as a cartoon, like on Cartoon Network. It then spun off and did the Justice League. So all of the DC women, they were like a vintage retro pinup kind of vibe. Kind of like a Dita Von Teese or uh, Veronica Lake or whoever it is. Kind of like the Jessica Rabbit, you know, with the hair. And again, that style... It was probably easy to draw, but that was like Bruce Tim, what he was known for, like his kind of whatever. So anyway, this is like a bowl cap or a bowl hat, whatever. I used to have a fedora hat from back in 2006. Like when I got out of high school, I had worked at a, a Target for a little bit of a time. But anyhow, there was a question mark onto here and I painted it with that fabric glue, the glitter glue sort. And um, I have a green, like, tuxedo costume of Joker. I have all the Halloween costumes of Batman, just so you know. I have so many of Harley Quinn, Cat, Batwoman, and Catwoman, and Poison Ivy. But I have Two-Face, I have Riddler, I have Nightwing. I have, like, I think almost all of them, but Batman. Because, honestly, I'm not the biggest Batman fan. I mean, I am, I like the Rogue, Rogue Gallery? Rose Gallery? Rose Gallery or Rogue Gallery? Correct me, because I know I'm probably saying it wrong. So, the glitter glue paint. I put the neon green. I want to bold outline it in black, okay? Because the black, I'll show you here. Let me just show you something real quick, y'all. The black, you've seen this black fabric tulip crap. I put this on my Catwoman doll. Her face, I made her mask looking like a black cat from Spider-Man. Felicia Hardy, I'm getting all confused. Here I have a glittery glue. 
Um, the thing that I like about these fabric glues, these tulips, and they come in all different colors, but the black one, I love when you do it and it dries. It looks like latex or vinyl. It looks like pleather or, you know, that fake leather kind of stuff. It looks shiny. It looks like latex, honest and truthfully. And when it dries, it can go onto fabric and you can wash it in the laundry and it's not going to come off. So you see my little Riddler head. I've showed you this before, my Nightwing mask, which this mask was the same as this. That's what I'm trying to get you guys to, to see and understand. This was this, okay? I had just cut it to be like Nightwing. I cut it how I wanted it to be. Uh, that one really fine actor guy dressed up as him or whatever. I'm forgetting his name. But again, the retro, the vintage, the pinup, all the different decades of the past, I look to that like for inspiration and blah, 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 blah. And going back to the Riddler, the green. So how I have this suit right here, this is the old Halloween costume. This is a cheapo generic one. I have the Riddler costume in a green like this, but I think it's just the blaze or just the tuxedo jacket. I do not think it's the pants, but I want to make green question marks all over the suit and I want to do it my own artful self. I don't want to go buy. They had like a tuxedo costume at Spirit Halloween years ago. And it was really, really expensive. I think it was $100 or maybe even $150. So I want to take the green suit that I have like this and put question marks all over it. Replicate it in that thing. And perhaps I would maybe even put glitter onto them. Like sprinkle some glitter. I don't know yet if I'm going to do that or not. Leave advice in the comments. That's why I'm doing this video. But I'm picturing... The Riddler portrayed by Jim Carrey. Like I liked, he had a weird cat suit, like a stretchy spandex or lycra or whatever, but he had question marks everywhere. And I freaking love that. Now that bowl cap, that hat, I love it because that kind of hat or a fedora kind of hat, it's just gangster. It's a gangsta from that, the retro era and pin, pin, I cannot talk. So this cheap costume here. This is a cheap Halloween costume, and all that it is, it is meant to be a gangster. Like, a, they call it a mobster, I think. But this is an old costume that I had from a long time. This is the pants. This is a really, really cheap costume from Kmart. Kmart's, like, aren't even really in existence anymore. There was a big, great Kmart in Carolina Outer Banks. But even this, this white uh, button-down Oxford shirt, it's fake. It's a Velcro thing strapped to the back. This tie is a fake. Okay, but the reason I'm liking this is because of the pinstripe. Bear with me for just a minute. This pinstripe suit and the pinstripe pants, which I have a really cool Joker costume that I've dressed up as Joker a bunch of times for Halloween. I'll insert pictures if I think of it. And it feels like pajamas. When you just wear a Halloween costume like this, it feels like pajamas, which is so comfortable, so very nice. But going back to the gangster, the mob, the mobster look, the vintage, the retro, the pinup, that's why I like that, that Riddler hat. I was playing with that hat the other night, trying to do like tricks and things with it. This Halloween costume, it came with a rubber mask that I do not like. It's disgusting and ugly, and I'm not gonna use it for that. I want to use this for drag, and I have a couple things in mind. The first thing I think of with, when I see a pinstripe like this, I think of Britney Spears all the time when she did Me Against the Music, and she had the baby blue like uh, tie collar thing, but she didn't have an undershirt. But when I see this pinstripe the way it is, and this is a large, but it runs really big. It's like baggy onto me. I, uh, okay. I want to take this glitter glue that you see right here and I want to draw all these lines on here. I want to draw lines so it's going to be the silver glitter glue. And I have this thing of crystals that I've had forever and a half and I need to use this. These are from Walmart or any kind of arts and crafts store. Hobby Lobby, Joann's Fabric, Packetans, Michaels. That's the art stores that we have around here, but they're not even like local. You have to go like to Pittsburgh or to Youngstown or Cleveland. All of the art stores around here had closed down. But I want, I want your opinion, guys. That's why I'm doing this video. I hope someone leave me a comment. I'm picturing Kourtney Kardashian had worn a tuxedo kind of um, 
pants and like blazer jacket, like a tuxedo. I don't know if it was Rick Owens or who was the designer of it, but I keep picturing this. Everywhere that you see a stripe, imagine it like with this silver glittery glue. And then in between, I, I would want to decorate with these uh, Horizon Gems. These are just plain silver. I think it would go with the silver against the black. Um, I mean, these pinstripes. This black is kind of like it's, it's old, it's faded. You know, it's been worn and torn and snagged and everything. But this particular thing, if this goes on, it should not, it should not wash off in the laundry. But then I just want to know if I put these gems in between the spaces, do you think that would look too busy and too cluttery? I don't want it to be too cluttery. Sometimes drag, I mean, drag is always extra, extra, extra. More, more, more is more. But like Coco Chanel or whoever says, take one thing off before you leave the house. But drag queens are like, put five, 1500 shit and dozen things back on. Like, you already know, like, glitter, 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 glitter. Everything is glitter. And everything that glitters ain't gold. I'm sure that y'all heard that before. Which I never really understood. But, I have to insert the picture of Courtney if I could. The Courtney Kardashian. And then, picture with this. If I did all the pinstripes here, I have to press this with the iron. I have a shark steamer machine, and mine is broken for some reason. I don't know why. But even if I were to decorate the tie, what you do with the tie, and this is a fake tie, this is not even real. It's like literally a loop of fabric and you just tuck it down in. But if I put stripes on one direction, diagonal or whatever, then where the knot is, you just go the opposite direction. Because I used to draw, and that's how you would draw a tie. And last but not least, what I wanted to talk about on this video. Ooh, I showed you guys a billion times, like I got all kinds of gems and things like that. But um, I love... On YouTube, there is a channel, The Way We Wore, was a TV show that used to be on the Smithsonian. It was called LA Frock Rockers or Frock Stars or something, something, something. But I love Doris Raymond is the woman who does the TV show. She goes to Julian's auction. They have vintage, retro, really, really old ancient pieces. She's not all into the celebrity like the Marilyn Monroe or whoever. But like she sees the stuff that Michael Jackson had, Janet Jackson. Elvis Presley, like Marilyn Monroe, all them, all them kind of people like from forever ago, their stuff sells. And um, she always talks about different designers and creators and artistic people. And she always introduces me to things that I don't know, or maybe I've heard of before, but I forgot about it or whatever. But recently she was talking about Erte, and this is one of Erte's drawings. Um, this one is called the Balcony Greeting. And he made these garments in real life. And like they are exquisite and extravagant. And like they're the most expensive. Even this image, if you were to buy this image off of eBay, it's like $6,000 for like a replica. Okay, so catch up with me now. Catch up. So I was just looking at some of his fashion doodles and his sketches and his drawings. And I am in love. Okay, so this one is not him, not to my knowledge. This is just a boudoir image, but like the color scheme with the black hair and the red lip, and obviously her garment is sheer, but it's it's a vanity, like she's sitting in the boudoir with her vanity. It's given a little bit of like Chicago vibes. I'm getting a Catherine Zeta-Jones. Now this is the Erte, famous, famous drawing. He made this garment in real life, and if you get the chance, watch Doris Raymond YouTube channel, The Way We Wore, is the name of the channel. Oh my God. When she goes to Julian's auction and she sees this garment up for sale and it's all, it's all chains and beads and pearls and diamonds and rhinestones. And it is humongous. It is big and it is heavy and it's like millions and billions of dollars. It like blows my mind because the way that they preserve these old ancient architectural, uh, architecture pieces of work, cause it's like history. They put them in like acid free boxes and they only can wear white gloves and some of the garments are so heavy like they can't even come out. But this headdress is freaking everything in the real life and the cape with the stars and the spider webs and the glitter and the gold. It is the most beautiful thing I've like ever seen ever. And like I, I did, my lips are always so dry. I have a really um, cheap generic like Halloween costume cape that's a spider web and it's purple glitter. And it doesn't even do like no kind of justice. This thing is the prettiest thing I ever seen. 
So this design drawing, I believe it was called Stardust, this one, or this one's the, the balcony. And he just did a lot, a lot of fashion, like for real. Like that dog with the fur, how chic is that? But um, the Stardust one, the gold, the glitter, the everything, like, you know, like Golame. You just have to trust me. You have to check it out. I watch so much of Doris's videos. I love them to death. I love her to death. She like, she's informative and educational and she's well read and well versed. And she always talks very like politically correct and respectful. She has a lot of different episodes where Dita Von Teese is on her channel. That's how I got introduced to Doris because I'm a Dita Von Teese fan. And Doris will talk about like Mexican jewelry or she'll talk about Selena, the icon that she was and the outfits that she wore. She talks about like Jackie O or Kennedy or whoever. And she just talks about if you were to watch um, like one specific designer, whether it's Dior or whoever, like Halston, Lagerfeld, Balenciaga, like whatever. She just she dives deep, but she's history in the past, retro vintage so not current day. She does like the old school stuff, but it, it's so good. Whether it's um, Audrey Hepburn or Marilyn Monroe, like the designers who design for them. And I'm drawing kind of blanks right now. But one of my favorite videos too of her, she did one about Fran Dresser or Fran Fine from the TV show The Nanny that was popular in the 90s, where Fran had wore a whole lot of mos Moschino. And I didn't know that, but I mean, I should have known it because I, I grew up watching that show, but I didn't like it. But because her voice annoyed me, like, meh, Mr. Sheffield and Niles and B.B. Babcocker. I used to call Niles Nigel. Anyhow, I think I could do a friend frickin' snatch game impersonation. You just go, <laughs> I don't know how her laugh is. I don't think she laughs, but she just talks a lot about Jewish stuff and getting married and blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, Steve Martin. I did not know this. I don't know, he's a dentist. He's about to kill somebody. Like Steve Martin, Martin Short, Rick Moranis. I used to love Polly Shore. People always tell me I look like him. And I think it's just because my hair is curly. And Polly Shore is Jewish, and I have 2% Jewish. But anyway, guys, check out Erte. Um, he had commissioned, I think it was Tony Chase. I almost said Tony Stark because I'm thinking of uh, Avengers and Iron Man for some reason. But. Erte had commissioned Tony Chase, who was Dolly Parton's favorite designer back at that time, to make these garments and these capes and these long, extravagant ca uh, ch trains and caftans. I cannot talk, people. I'm so sorry. I get so tongue twisted. But yeah, caftan, daishiki, you know, like robes, the headdresses, the stuff. If you see this stuff, it's on a whole other level. And I talk about Hexton a lot. Hexton on YouTube, he repaints and does Barbie dolls and like Monster High dolls and Rainbow High and da 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 da. They made Barbie dolls of these fashion looks because they were that like epic and iconic. In like I said, if you were to even to buy the image of this, like a replica, six grand, an image of this is like 10 grand, 20 grand. It just blows my mind. Drag queens need to like look into history and just wow. So leave me comments. I read them. I showed you my Riddler. I showed you my pinstriped gangster suit. Let me know if you think it'd be cute if I were to glitter bedazzle the thing. The thing that sucks is it's like so, so big. I have to press it with the flat iron because my favorite thing about a suit, like you can see my rose gold blazer one back there. I freaking love like if it's pressed and if the shoulder pads are there, I might try to put shoulder pads into this. Let me know if that's a good idea. You can just get some foam. That shape is the ideal, the structure, people. The 80s is coming back in fashion, and especially how 80s does the 40s. Because everything repeats itself, especially in history. It's crazy because Doris talked about, I think it's like two decades past is considered like already vintage and retro and like stuff like that. And it's crazy because 40 years past always recycles. So, bye guys. Love ya.